everybody. I'm Dustin Hookstra from AWR Corporation. Today I'll be presenting a streamlined design flow between AWR's Microwave Office and ANSYS HFSS. Uh, Microwave Office is a circuit design simulation tool, um, and ANSYS HFSS is a 3D EM simulator tool. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with both of those. Oh, it's advancing. Okay, there it goes. So, um, as you all know, a big issue with design is RF interference. Uh, one of the ways we combat uh, dealing with RF interference is to do more advanced simulations. You go beyond circuit simulation and you do EM simulation. This is, in any type of wireless technology, this becomes, can become an issue. So, uh, what we like to do is to enhance the ability to, to simulate designs and account for this interference, you can take a design that's in microwave office and seamlessly bring it into a ANSYS and use the HFSS tool to do the 3D simulation. So this is a slide, I don't know if any of you have taken an AWR EM training class before, but this is one we show at the beginning of almost every class. This is kind of a big picture of all the EM tools available without naming any names specifically. Um, over towards the left side of the axis is the more basic simulation tools, the 2D, cross-sectional solvers, um, for example, transmission lines, very basic stuff, been around for decades and decades. Um, as you move along the axis, you go towards 3D planar solvers. Um, some industry examples of that might be uh, AWR's Axiom or um, Agilent's Momentum. So these are planar solvers. Um, they do thi thick metal simulations. Um, might simulate things like patch antennas or cavities. Um, also kind of within the, the 3D category, but not exactly an EM solver per se, is EM models like bond wires and spiral inductors. Um, as you move far farther to the right, then you get to the, to the more complicated solvers because you might have more complicated geometries. 3D objects, things that can be drawn in free space. This is where you have uh, the different types of solvers, FEM, which is finite element, FDTD, and BEM. So you can do things like uh, BGA, ball grid arrays, um, bond wires, arbitrary, you really have no limitation. Whatever you draw, you can solve. And um, what could almost be on the x-axis is time, because as we go on in time, as these uh, technologies become more advanced, the more freedom you have to draw and simulate what you have drawn. So what uh, we're presenting today is the flow from AWR's Microwave Office where you can go over to ANSYS to do to their 3D solver, bring the results back to Microwave Office and complete your simulation. Um, also, it's kind of a, in the lower right there, um, kind of more further along in the road map is HFSS Ice Pack, which is a thermal solver. Because really all we're doing is transferring geometries and uh, material information. So you're not limited to just EM, not just HFSS, we can't actually go further and do uh, thermal simulations. And, but like I said, that's down the road, that's on the road map, not offered quite yet today. So it's kind of a sample design, we chose a four layer LTCC module. And what this board has, it's uh, you know four metal layers, we have vias, traces, a few surface mount devices. This is just representative of what we see with a lot of our customers today. They, a lot of times it's more advanced um, where you'd have a lot of chips on there, but for the sake of simplicity and showing the flow, we just chose a simple module design. And the screenshots we show here are within the AWR design environment. And the way this would be created is using our, our drawing tools uh, within using uh, Analyst front end. So you can create the geometry, you can draw everything there. Um, that's all done within the AWR environment. But if you wanted to do, do your simulation in another tool, and in this case we're talking about HFSS, all you would do is right click on your EM structure which would bring up this menu. And I think within the last week or so we actually changed what that says. I think it says now uh, export to HFSS. Charlotte, you might know. Well, if you go to one of our booths later you can see what it says exactly, but it's the same spot in the menu. And it's, what it's doing is it's exporting an XML file, just a text file that gives all the geometry information. Then you go over to open up ANSYS and you bring in 
you import that file. It'll, there's a menu, the import menu says import AWR microwave office design. And you get that exact same design in ANSYS, HFSS, and you can run the simulation there. And everything's set up for you. It has all the frequencies you set up, has all your materials, all your boundary conditions, all your ports. So you really don't need to do anything except click the simulate button once it's in this tool. And um, we're not just limited to the geometries, the types of geometries we're showing here. We also do support P cells today. Um, two examples of the ones we support are bond wires and ball grid arrays. So if you've created those in the AWR environment, those will port over into ANSYS. So those don't need to be redrawn or recreated. So if you have bond wires and ball grid in your design, uh, no problem with that. And we'll expand that list as time goes on. But those are the two major ones that we think people will be interested in using today. So once your uh, simulation is complete in HFSS, and assuming this will be very fast because they have a very fast solver, uh, you get your results back. These are just examples of what the many, many traces we get because we actually have a 12-port model that we exported at HFSS. So it doesn't mean a whole lot just looking at it here. But you get an S-parameter file, an S12P file, which you can just import back into AWR. And in, within AWR, one little nice feature we have is that you can create a symbol that looks like your layout. Uh, this is done using our, our symbol generator wizard, just uh, one of the standard features in AWR. You open the wizard, you say point to your EM layout, it creates a nice symbol, so you can actually wire it up nicely. Um, it's a little tough to see, but in a few spots here, you can see here's the components. There are some surface mount components in the original EM structure. So those are here at the circuit level, you know, some capacitors that are wired in here. And then of course your input and your output ports. So instead of just having a black box with six ports or, um, yeah, six ports in this case, you can actually have a, a nice symbol so you can make sure you have everything wired up correctly to do your simulation. So once you have everything back in AWR, you can run your simulation. You can see the results with everything wired up. Um, another option we have to keep things clean is we can use switch views. That way you can set up within your measurement dialog, you can choose in this case, I chose to name the switch view HFSS. So you can choose your switch view so you can still maintain that original EM layout within your circuit. So you don't need to delete anything. You don't need to replace anything. It's just all driven within the measurement, whether you switch between the original EM simulation or using the HFSS S parameters you brought back. So that kind of closes the loop on the EM simulation. As I mentioned before, we're not just limited to EM simulation. Going forward, we plan to uh, enable users to do thermal simulations using ice pack from ANSYS. So this isn't a very exciting one because there's only passive devices on the surface, so you only see a little bit of red and yellow and orange spots on there. But of course, with the more complicated, you put a PA on the top of that, you'll see heat flowing out all over the place. So that's something we plan to support going forward. Um, so really, the benefits of this flow are going to be a reduction in the amount of time the users have, because really you're not, you're not creating something in AWR, you're not drawing it, and then having to export DXF files, import them into HFSS, put your ports back on, set up your simulation again, your frequencies again, your boundary conditions again. It's all done automated. It just takes take a couple of mouse clicks to get it over there. Um, this also reduces the number of errors. It's always possible, you know, port three in your AWR design might accidentally become port two in your HFSS design, and you wouldn't even know it until hopefully it, you know, it might be too late. You might find out after the design's taped out. So it's good to catch, you catch these errors early on because it's all automated. And as I mentioned, going forward, there's a whole slew of uh, multi-physics solutions available with ANSYS. So this is kind of our first step is getting it into HFSS. Going forward, we're going to see what other, other ones we can offer. So. Uh, we, will be we do have this demonstrating today and tomorrow throughout the week um, in both our booths. So over at booth 633 uh, AWR, we have it set up there on the corner and also in booth 1433. Uh, Charlotte, who's over here, uh, she can demonstrate it for you. There's also another engineer over there who can uh, demonstrate it for you. So feel free to stop by both our booths and uh, see the actual demonstration. A little more exciting than PowerPoint, see a live interaction. Are there any questions? Do you think, would it be all right to come up to the mic? I just, I, I can't hear you. Um, 
I'm assuming that the uh, the applications that you shown today are something that are just in AWS, the uh, Microwave Office 11 and yes. not available on some of the previous Oh, versions. okay. Yeah, that's a great question. So everything you've seen today, um, uh, the exporting functionality is going to be in version 12 of the software. Right now we're on version 11 um, with the potential to backport it to like an 11.02 version. Uh, so we can provide it, if we do have customers who want to try this out, we can provide them beta software to test it. Um, similar situation with ANSYS, it's in beta version right now. We could provide that to customers who want to try it out early on. But it's not in production yet. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. Thank you.